We now welcome UFC middleweight Carl Roberson. Carl, thank you for the time today, sir. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good, thank you. We will take the first question from Augusto German Diaz Gay with Somos MMA. Oh, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to, to ask you if you think that, that all this uh, with uh, Marvin Vettori went too personal. Um, maybe on his side. It's never personal on my side. I could care less how he feels, what he thinks. Uh, and, and how are you doing, taking account, into account all the your medical issues uh, um, a month ago? How, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling much better. Uh, took the precautions I needed to, got the doctors around me I needed to, got the uh, nutritionists around me I needed to, and uh, everything's going as planned. And, and what about the, the training camp? How did it, how did it work? Uh, training camp went really well. Training camp went well. Um, did everything, got the work, got the work and I needed to, got the training partners there that down I needed to, and everything's going as planned. Okay, um, and, uh, taking taking out all the, the No, the fight on Saturday is going to be a banger. Like I said, we both like to stand. He got some animosity towards me. And I like to punch people. So I like to be violent in there and all my fights show that. So Saturday is going to show that too. Do you, do you think the, the reschedule affects you in, in some, in any way? Um, no, I don't. The reschedule helped me with uh, the issues I had in the last cut and uh, helped me better with my mind and body. So everything's where it's supposed to be. Um, fast mind, adapting, and hitting hard. Okay. Thank you very much, Carl. Good luck. Thank you. And we will take the next question from Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, welcome back, Carl. I know you said that uh, if there's an injury, if any injury, it's on his side. Is that something you do with all of your fights? Is it more important to just focus on it and not let those emotions overwhelm you, overwhelm you and affect the fight? Yeah, you never let the emotions overwhelm you. Emotions get you in trouble. Emotions put you in bad positions. So calm mind is a dangerous mind. A calm body is a dangerous body. So I stay calm and stay focused. Now, I, I don't want to focus on it too much then, but the hotel confrontation that you went through, I think at one point you called it a setup. Um, with a little time having passed and reflection, do you still feel that way? Yeah, it was definitely a setup. Like, if you watch the video, the dude's camera was coming open before the elevator even opened. How did he know that was happening? That don't make any sense. And that was from his team. Again, how did he even know I was coming down the elevator? He was waiting. Setup. Obvious. All right, last one on that subject then. Um, have you ever had a feud like this or an opponent react like this to you at any point in your career? Um, no. I don't really deal with childish people, so I don't really run into them that much. So this is my first time for me. Fair enough. And, you know, the weight cut obviously went bad last time, but I wanted you to speak on, you know, kind of what went wrong, what adjustments you've made uh, for this one. Um, everything went wrong last weight cut. Uh, body shut down, mind shut down, passed out. Uh, got sent to the hospital, got pulled from the fight. This one, I got nutritionists around me. I got doctors around me who make sure everything's right, make sure my levels stay right. Make sure I'm not overdoing it, and make sure I'm not cutting too much at once. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. And we will take the next question from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Carl. I know a lot of questions are coming in about the weight cut, but I gotta ask this. You know, we've seen some pretty bad weight cuts in the past, and it can take some time to recover from that and kind of get you know get back to normal, kidney shutdown, things like that. This is only happening a month after that. That fight was scheduled, but like, how long did it take you after that whole incident happened for for you to get back to normal, for your body to feel normal again? Um, it took a little bit. Definitely took a little bit. Um, took a lot of blood work and uh, electrolytes checking and all that to make sure everything was good. Took a lot of scans and all that, so everything was checked, and I wasn't pushed too hard at first to see if my body could even do it, and it got cleared, so I'm here. Were you happy with the timing of this fight? I mean, again. And only four weeks after the last one, would you have preferred to be a little further away, or were you happy to get it rescheduled quickly? I'm a fighter. It is what it is to me. Like you said, give me a date, I'm going to fight. If I can make it, I'm going to make it. And they gave me a date, and I said yes, so let's do it. 
you said the bad blood, you know, with, with Marvin doesn't really affect you, doesn't really bother you, but at the end of the day, were you happy that you got this fight and not just some other guy? Yeah, definitely. It's a bigger name, um, more exposure, and it's a break into the top 15. We're the two top of the division right now who are not in the top 15. We're the two prospects looking to climb the division, so we have to fight each other. A lot of fighters say, you know, it's not good to fight with emotion. you got to kind of shut yourself down because emotion can kind of eat you up in the octagon. It can, you know, it can you know, burn you out in a way. Uh, do you feel like you're going to look for that in this fight, considering you know Marvin's going to be charged up, you know he's angry, he's been very vocal about it. Like, do you feel like that could actually work against him in this fight? It's definitely going to work to my, to my advantage. He's emotional. He's an emotional kid. He can't control himself. He showed that in the hotel. He showed that in his interviews. He can't control himself, and I want to just pick him apart and whoop his ass. And last question, you know, the last one got a lot of attention, probably for the wrong reasons, because of the whole hotel incident, the weight miss, everything like that. But now you guys are going to be co-main event, you know, on a card on ESPN. I mean, again, not that you wanted things to play out the way they did the last time, but you feel like this is an even bigger opportunity now because of everything that happened. But this is definitely a bigger opportunity. I'd rather get a co-main event off of just skill, not off of uh, banter and uh, theatrics in the hotel, but it is what it is, and we got here, so time to show out. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. And we will take our next questions from Mike Heck with MMA Fighting. Hey, Carl, even, even though the fight was postponed because of the health issues and the weight cut and you took care of all of that, is it almost like a blessing in disguise that this fight was pushed back because, one, you get a better spot, and, two, there's a lot more buzz behind it? Definitely, definitely. The buzz is, is fantastic. You get more, more of a show. People are looking at this fight. People consider this fight the main, the main event on the card, and it's for a reason. Because we both fight. Everybody who watch our fights, you know, we stand there and bang, we push the pace, and we never back down. I'm looking forward to it. Have you felt this kind of buzz in any of your fights prior to this? Especially, I mean, I know this is your first co-main event, and this is the, yeah. the hottest marquee spot you've been in, but have you felt a buzz for a fight that you've been involved in like this before? Yeah, my co my uh, Contender Series fight, the Glover Teixeira fight, um, my MSG fight, all buzz, because everybody's looking for me to fight because they know I bang. I wanted to ask you about last weekend, UFC 250. We saw fighters like Aljamain Sterling, Alex Caceres, and Devin Clark use the platform to promote the protests against racial injustice and Devin Clark put his fist in the air and it was a, it was a really cool moment. I just wanted to get your reaction to that because I know you've been posting about it a little bit on social media you've had a couple of blackout days on Instagram. I just wanted to get your take and, and your stance on everything that's going on in the country. I love it. I love that people are standing up. I love people showing that they support us and that they want change. That's what we need. That's what we need and that's what we're going to show and we're going to keep doing it until we get it. What in particular do you see is, is the biggest issue in this country right now in terms um, of, of getting everybody together? Because I know it's, it's something that's going to be a slow progression. It's not going to happen overnight, but I think a lot of those fighters like Alex and Al Jermaine and Devin all agree that eventually we can all get there. What do you think we, need, we all need to do better? Eventually we all can get there. We need to uh, see each other's sides better. That's pretty, pretty much what it is. See where everybody's coming from. Not everybody's coming from the same past same family, same neighborhoods. They're not everybody's given the same opportunities. So people need to notice that and approach it in a certain way. Like people can't keep looking down on other people because of where they come from. That's not how, that's not how anything's gonna change. You need to accept the fact that everybody comes from different walks of life and everybody should be equal in every walks of life. Have the responsibilities and have the choices. So equality is the goal and that's what we're looking for. And then last thing for me, Alex Caceres was sharing a couple of stories of things that impacted him. And I spoke with Devin Clark yesterday. He shared a story with me as well. Has that happened to you before where you were, I guess, profiled or, or mistreated by whether it's police officers or, or, or other people in your community based on who you are, the color of your skin, et cetera? Yes, definitely. That happens all the time. That happens when we go to grocery stores, when we're walking down the street and people cross the street when they really see us walking. People grab their purses. People come out of elevators and wait for the next one when we come up to the elevator. And so it's little things that people don't think we notice that we notice, we just don't say much about it. But now that it's time to be spoken up, it's time to show. It's time to show that we need this to stop because this affects people. You'd be, you'd be surprised how many people get hurt just by little things. Maybe the greatest people, like nicest person that you'll never know just off the looks that you think they're scary or something. That's, that's, that's disappointing in the world. All right, I appreciate the candor. All the best to you on Saturday. Thank you.
Thank you, Carl. That is all the time we have for you, sir. You are good to go. Thank you, bud. And next up, we will be 